their theology seat and think mostly seat. Like a thief in the night, Christ will return someday, catching many unprepared. Don't let that happen. These are unpredicted days and they will not go on forever. Christ has shown us through the cross and through his word how we are to live during these days by grace but trusting in him to live through us. Because Jesus is coming back someday, we are to be helpful every day. Paul gave us the specific in 1 Thessalonians 5 and we argue you brothers. the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. But always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put up the spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. If you were wondering what to do today, this should keep you occupied. Review the list. Consider specific ways to leave out a few of the items. I say go for it. So as long as you remember who is doing the and through you, Paul concludes the list with this reminder. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your Holy Spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. God, you are the one at work in us. By your spirit, through your word, I ask that you will speak to me clearly now. What specific things do you want to do through me to be helpful today? Lead me, guide me, I trust you to, to do it through me. Amen. Your key life. A happy marriage is the union of two good forgivers. Marriage is huge. I don't think there is any way to understand how huge it is until you are in it. Good and bad, it spills over into all other aspects of life. It's no wonder then that couples always ask, what's the key to a great marriage? What's the secret? Just the one secret, the one key to a great marriage. What's it, what's it, what is it? I always give the same answer given to me, to me by my close friend. A great marriage comes from two people walking in the spirit, loving one another. The couples almost always respond something along these lines. Yeah. Yeah, I know that, but tell me something really practical that will really make a difference. And I always answer, oh, now I get your question. Okay, then a great marriage comes from two people walking in the spirit, loving one another. Once you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and uh, devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. In the pursuit of true love, we can function in the Holy Spirit. 
more we can function in the flesh as married couple if we function in the flesh this is called what if we function in the spirit this is called love pretty simple and intensely practical and it's not just the key for a great marriage it works for any relationship and not really just for relationship it's the key to a great life Stop. 
bank up under the weight of trust putting him if God turned back on his commitment to this uh, safety of his young servants had they misread or misinterpreted the scriptures the answer although hard to find is surely that the Lord did rescue them from their earthly pain and honor them in his immediate presence. Ever since their death, they enjoyed his promise to satisfy them with a long life as long as eternity and give them his salvation. Truly, they found rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Faith takes the long view, and God's shadow is long is a long shadow. How do those who believe they believe in God, but without passion in the heart, without anguish of mind, without uncertainty, without doubt, and even at time without despair, believe only in the idea of God and not in God Himself? When the hard, when hard times come, it's totally natural to ask, how do I get out of this? Life is filled with all kinds of suffering. Some of us are suffering in a bad marriage, and our spouse just won't get their act together. And it feels like it's later. The fleshy reaction is to get out of the suffering one way or the other. But God has other ideas. In Romans 5, Paul says, We also glorify glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering pure produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. Suffering is a tool that God uses to form us and to mold us to deepen our intimacy with Christ rather than the fleshy response of trying to get out. We can choose to ask, all right, I am in this rain and I don't want to waste it. Lord, how are you going to use this suffering to grow me, to deepen my walk with Jesus? It's a recalibration of the mindset from flesh to spirit and it works in every suffering. Every difficulty we face in an opportunity to become more like Christ and experience Christ more intimately. Please hear me. God does not accept you to endure physical or sexual abuse in the name of suffering producing growth. If your response is abusing you, tell someone in your church whom you trust or another authority can intervene. But if your spouse just doesn't care, ask God to do a miracle. Keep asking. He's capable. He can do it. Fight for your marriage. Don't fall into the temptation of throwing in the towel. And here's the most important thing. Walk in the spirit. Why? Because the best relationships are between two spirit loving one another jesus be my strength and patience in my marriage and all relationships use every difficulty i face to draw into deeper intimacy with you show me what i can learn from these hard times make me more like jesus because of them amen focusing on your father over your flesh society drives people crazy with lust and calls it advertising working in the spirit and loving one another is the key to great relationships particularly that most intense of all relationships marriage marriage god's word tells us that the spirit however is in opposition to our flesh what exactly is the flesh flesh is that condition where my focus is 
primarily on myself, self-centeredness to a great degree as I attempt to live out of my own resources. My resources are the stuff that I can produce on my own or put stock in outside of God-like heritage, education, IQ, personality, etc. Flesh is me trying to live life independently of God so that I can cope with life. Flesh is trying to produce life on my own rather than in Christ. consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Now you look at all those things and say, well those sound pretty good, moral, passionate, religious, good heritage, are those good things. Paul takes these things which give him incredibly high status in his culture and calls them garbage. He calls them dung actually the illiteral translation is really a much stronger word than dog but we are trying to run a ministry so i am not going to say it the point is that Paul takes the things he, he has earned in the flesh titles earthly possessions social status etc and says they are worse than worthless compared to
yet this is where many of us end up. Why? Because even though we started with good intentions, we walked in the wrong way. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Please hear me, one of the greatest gifts of Mary is that it exposes when we are living in the flesh rather than walking by the Spirit. When your flesh fights against those things you really want to do, it feels like a war and you might feel like you have to surrender to your fleshly desires. But remember, the victory has already been won on the cross. The battles will continue, but right now, in Christ, you are alive. that 
I can experience this fruit from the inside out and not from the outside in. Amen. You don't get just a little bit of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has always been at work throughout history and throughout scripture. He calls us to a relationship with God. He hover over chaos and brings order. He reveals truth in the darkness and so much more. How this same spirit is alive and working in you. If you will, you will allow him access to your life. Now is the time for prayer. As we face a global crisis, national unrest, on upcoming elections, and widespread uncertainty, prayer must be our priority, not just to see God move in these circumstances, but for the sake of our own fragile hearts. In moments of great need, we turn to our true friends. We allow ourselves to be vulnerable with them, share openly what's troubling us, and humbly receive their comfort and care. There is no greater friend than Jesus, and he is eager to hear what's troubling your heart today. Prayers will kindle your passion for prayer so you can experience God's presence and see your prayers answered. Getting to know yourself again, there are three things extremely hard, still a diamond and to know one's self. It's fairly easy to get to know your bandmate. It's a whole lot harder to be honest enough to get to know yourself and be humble enough to take responsibility for your flesh. Carol is a counselor who helps people to turn over a new leaf in their marriage. She has talked to so many people about their flesh that she is identified numerous flesh patterns which ones might describe your natural bed. Performance flesh. The hard worker, well adjusted, aggressive, outgoing, positive, motivated, driven, take charge kind of person. Religious flesh. The good Christian, passive, nice, sweet, obedient, dutiful, pious, sanctimonious. Superior flesh, the snob, outwarding, proud, defensive, conceited, know it all. They look down on other people because they are not as right as they are. Comfort flesh, the laid back, easy going person, cautious, indecisive, unmotivated, and avoids conflict like the plush. Negative, complaining, de de defeated, self-pitying, they are often unforgiving and blaming. Caretaker flesh, the enabler, rescuer, fixer, often ob ob uh, obsessive, ne nagging, overly responsible, overprotective. The flesh, the nice guy, compliant, sub, uh, submissive, compromising, self-neglecting, has a hard time saying no and saying yes to, to too much in order to feel accepted. Indulgent flesh, the compulsive person, obsessive, easily addicted, in shaven, thrill seeker, pleasure seeker, hostile 
privilege, the abs abusive, antisocial person, angry, the domineering, vengeable, vengeful, quick tempered. Anything sounds familiar? If not, you probably have a religious or superior flesh. Holy Spirit, make me honest and humble so I can identify. 